Hey guys, so here we are with Earth Reborn Scenario 6. Uh, once again, you can copy this map from the scenario book. And uh, then in terms of character placement, so uh, for this scenario I did get to choose. And uh, how it works was the Solomite player was given his uh, five characters, their markers, and then two decoys to work with. And he can place them anywhere on an indoor space. Um, now I did choose to specialize. I put Kendall where he could access a body so that he could use his... Um, his special ability that allows him to create zombies, so giving the Solomites more players. I put Jess Hollister, who has a key card, uh, into the secret safe room because it will give her an extra two dice for searching. Um, and it's in office quarters, so it's likely she'll be able to get a good gun quick because she doesn't have anything. Um, I also put Frank Einstein near weapons. I use Jeff Dealer, who has decent technical or engineering, uh, to try and get us some spy points. And, uh, yeah, I think that's everyone. And I also, nope, Cherokee Bill will be on surveillance trying to give uh, extra command points because, uh, for this scenario, the initial setup, Salmites only have five command points to work with up against the NORAD's ten, plus, of course, the character bonuses. So you don't have very much to work with. Um, now, to give you the storyline, Cherokee Bill over here um, is actually a double agent. He's actually a NORAD agent. Um, in this scenario, we'll introduce character iconography for the first time, and so what uh, the NORAD player can do because he is on their team is that they can spend um, two points directly on his card, and that will uh, that's a one-time thing, so if he hasn't been activated yet, you spend two points on his card, you activate him, uh, and then he's yours to control up until the final phase, and that, at which point he uh, returns straight up. Uh, Frank Einstein is also somewhat of a traitor thanks to Cherokee Bill who has been talking with him and stuff and so you can do the same thing with uh, Frank Einstein again he can't have been activated previously so for two command points you activate him and then you make a search roll if you get four then you get two spy points um, now for this scenario there's also a huge gap so there's a gap in command points there's also a huge gap in um, morale points or mission points so the Samoy players are starting at 40, whereas the Norad's only starting at 5. So they're going to have to find a way to generate their own points, because in the objectives, uh, the win conditions are A, wipe out, all, wipe out all the Salamite players, which will probably be difficult, or B, in 6 rounds, um, so of 6 rounds, here's the uh, turn marker, so 6 rounds to come up uh, with more mission points by uh, by you spending spy points well. Um, so again, spy points uh, can be achieved through search orders. There's also characters abilities that allow you to get them as well. And exclusively to this scenario, rather than tr being able to trade those in for one mission point, you'll be able to trade them in for two. So that'll be our main way of, uh, of coming up with uh, mission points. Um, okay, other things to this scenario. So I was given these markers, got to choose where to place them. Uh, for the Salmite players, anywhere indoors. The Nora players, I was also given these three drill pieces, which on the back are red, and they say, um, I think they say driller on them. And so I got to choose uh, which person, again, by using markers. I didn't know where the Salmite players, uh, which were fakes and which were real. But uh, I had to place one per driller icon, and I got to choose the orientation and which person. And then we revealed simultaneously, and this is what we ended up with, which is a, which is a favorable set up for the NORAD just because Vasquez is near um, Frank Einstein, but I'll explain that in a bit. The other thing I was given was four items who I could equip to anyone. I chose to equip the rifle to Vasquez because she's a good shot, uh, Nick Bolter, the shotgun, um, and then James Wu, I'm going to give the light bolter because he's not going to do as much shooting. The reason for that is his character ability can give you a spy point, which in this case counts as two, uh, two mission points. So I'll be using that quite a bit. And then I'm also going to give him the Radio Scrambler, which is a new equipment card to this scenario. Um, and the basic idea is uh, you have these Radio Scrambler t tokens. A few of them say on, which means no effect. One of them says off, um, which does have effect. Then one of them says spying. Uh, and basically what that means if the radio, uh, if the if the token says on, then it has no effect. If it says off, then the character to who the opponent assigns it to. So if I if I was the Norad character and I was scrambling the Salomites radio, I would give I would place all six tokens on a character, and any additionals would be left off to the side. 
And um, the Selmite then has the player just then has the opportunity to switch one on his character uh, with another one on his character, or one on his character with one off. But he can only do one switch, so it's not like it's totally random or anything like that. So just one switch, and then um, whichever character, uh, basically whenever you activate a character, whenever you reach their command point limits, you flip over the radio scrambler. If it's an on symbol, nothing happens. You're good. But if it's an off symbol then your new command point limit, rather than being this number here, will be the extra you receive. And again, that's very thematic. So rather than being able to access the pool of command points that your team has access to, you can only access what that character gives you. Uh, so in the case of John Kendo, it would be one. In the case of Cherokee, or Cherokee Bill, Cherokee Bill, however you say it, he has no additional. So as soon as he's activated, you flip over that radio scrambler token to see whether or not um, you can even use any command points on him at all. Uh, the last thing you get uh, is a spy scrambler, which when that character reaches that command point max, or reaches his uh, command point bonus, uh, you flip it over, and if you see the spy symbol, then uh, the NORAD side in this case would be able to use that in the way you use spy points. So either to look at the top three cards here, or exclusive to this scenario to get two mission points as opposed to one on the scoreboard. Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, the two new things is character iconography, which isn't which isn't anything of a leap from what we've done before, and um, the radio scrambler, which is a bit more complex, as you just heard. Uh, but we'll get started. So Norad starts with initiative, and I'll start right away with an example of character iconography. Uh, so because they have way more command points, and the Salamites know this. Um, they're not gonna. They're not gonna try and outbid them on initiative, and in fact, they'll probably only interrupt when it's desperate. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first two points. And I'm gonna spend them on Frank Einstein because, as we said, he was a traitor. Um, and the reason I can do that is down here in the activation phase, the red team, so the Norad side, can spend two points. We're gonna do that on this character. Uh, it cancels activating him. And then I get to make a search roll. So two dice, if I get a four, I get two spy points. Um, and I got plenty, right? So with the spy dice, it's a lot easier to get high rolls. So I got six here. So this was effective. I have two spy points to work with. I have the choice of either digging through some equipment to give me more equipment to get spy points or getting four free points. Um, and uh, to keep things interesting, I'll use, I'll use one to look through here, and I'll take one over here for two points. So I'll boost that up right now. So you can see how fast this is going to go in terms of points. So I can look at these however I want. The Salamite player will get to see this card. And I'll get to look at both sides of these. Figure out if I want one or which one I want. Gas mask. Heavy machine gun looks good. Heavy machine gun. Um, truthfully, we have guns. I'm more worried about the Salamite getting guns. So I'm going to go right ahead and flip these over like this. So that uh, they can't get the guns. And then over here, what do we have? Am um, I worried about them taking Titanium Claws? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and keep it so that only we have weapons and they're stuck with uh, with this junk. So gas mask, least important, infrared goggles, and then maybe they can get that toxic gas. Um great. So that was my that was my turn because I chose to activate Frank Einstein who is a traitor. To finish explaining the scenario a bit, so um, obviously um, Cherokee Bill is a is an inside man for the Norad people. So he knew this attack was gonna happen at some point, as did Frank Einstein. And so in the middle of the night, they break in by drilling holes in the middle of the Salamite player's facilities and breaking in. So they're caught pretty off guard, which is why they don't have any weapons. Um, and uh, so the Salamite player's in a bit of a panic as the Norad have, have uh, coordinated a surprise attack. All right, cool. Now, keeping in mind Frank Einstein, this could only... Or sorry, over to the Salamite's turn. Now, keeping in mind that Frank Einstein, this could only happen because he hadn't been activated. Cherokee Bill has a similar feature, so as the Salamite player, I'm kind of stuck activating him because if I don't, then uh, the Norad player can gain control of him up until the final phase, and I really don't want that. So I'm going to activate him, show you where, where did I put him on the map? 
Uh, okay, right, he's doing video surveillance. So I'm going to put an interact order and see if I can get my team some more command points to use. Um, all right. Oh, uh, something you might have noticed is that I didn't use an interact to um, convert Frank Einstein. And uh, you just, you simply don't have to when it's a character's activation or a character's iconography. You don't need to spend the interact because you're not interacting, right? You're being that character. Um, so there's no need for an interact order. Um, okay, now to, to make this worthwhile, what am I doing? I'm doing an engineering roll to try and get four command points, and I have to spend at least one. Um, I suppose if I spend three, it's still worthwhile. I gain one, right? Uh, so I won't, I won't take any chances. I'll spend all three on the interact. My engineering here is one automatic hit, and then I'll get two extra yellow dice. Um, over here on the video surveillance, you can see the steps, and uh, my character has the proper orientation. I got to choose his facing when I placed him there, um, and I did so intentionally, of course. Okay, so here we go. One command point, engineering roll. Got to get three damage in order to get four fresh command points. Uh, one, two, three, four, plus his bonus one, putting me at five. So well enough, I'm going to take four additional ones here from the bank. So I ended up plus one command point there. Uh, it did cost me a turn, but honestly I think it's worthwhile, especially uh, when it's a dangerous character to have as a Salamite player. Um, and again, very thematic that knowing video surveillance right, would favor your movement. Very cool. Um, okay, back over to the NORAD side. Um, we still haven't done anything ourselves. Something I'm going to take advantage of, actually. I, I knew I was going to do this. Vasquez's ability is that if Frank Einstein's in her line of sight, she spends two command points, gets to roll three dice. If she gets five damage, then Frank Einstein is on the NORAD side indefinitely. Um, so in order to do that, I'm just going to need some movement. And I'm going to have to hope that uh, Frank Einstein doesn't run away. So, uh, some high movement, ideally, and we don't really have it. Uh, yeah, you know what, this one's pretty good. So, activating Vasquez, um, and I'll attach this in a proper place in between her and her, and her equipment. And I'll spend, uh, I'll do one at a time. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to break down a door, too. Uh, no, that's still the best, still the best one to do this. Here we go. So... One, two, three, four, five, six. I've adjusted my facing so that the dark blue is facing that door. And I need to create three damage, and I'm going to do so using this close combat order section. So close combat, I get an automatic two, and I spent an extra one to be striking hard, so I'll roll one additional yellow die. And um, we did it. So the default two plus the two here pointed me at four. So this door is broken. Uh, there's nothing underneath, so I'll just remove it from the game. And Frank Einstein uh, does, in fact, have line of sight to Vasquez for the first time. Um, now, <laughs> the Salamite player knows exactly what's going to happen if uh, they don't interrupt, so they're going to bid high. Let's do, let's do the four they just gained. So they're going to bid four to make sure that uh, Frank Einstein doesn't get uh, corrupted this turn. The NORAD is in the same boat where Frank Einstein is an extremely powerful fighter, as you can see there. High health, high damage, high close combat, um, and a good weight allowance, so he's really the best fighter. Um, so they'll also go for Both sides will bid high, and now in the case of a tie, uh, they both reveal, and in the case of a tie, uh, the player who is trying to interrupt loses. And so whoever's turn it was, they get to continue that turn. So these are spent points. Um, and now Vasquez has used three of her available five command points, so we'll spend the last two trying to win over Frank Einstein. So two command points, we have Frank Einstein in our line of sight. We're going to roll three dice to try and get a five, which is actually very easy. We'll see, though. We'll see. No! Uh, so we got four, and Frank Einstein's stuck, and so it didn't go through. Um, these do count towards her command point limit, as do the two on Frank Einstein over there. Uh, so she's stuck very close to Frank Einstein, and uh, the Salamites will probably take advantage of this. Um, so too bad for the NORADs. 
Um, still unable to move Frank Einstein quite yet. I will be activating either Jessica, let's do, let's do another cool one. Let's do John Kendall trying to create zombies. So I have him positioned properly in the morgue to do so. And uh, we're going to see if we can do this. So I'll spend two command points again because it's a character's iconography. Don't need an interact. I need to be facing a cadaver. I am. I'm going to do a science roll. So three dice. Um, that's something else that's important. I can't spend additional command points to um, add dice to a character's iconography. So you only get what it what the character gives you. In this case, the science roll. It's three. I'm not allowed to put a third to get a fourth die. Um, so here we go, three dice, and I need four damage. And then we get a zombie in the game. Ah, oh, it's just going awful. One, two, three, and here I had them ready and excited to jump on the board. So not yet, and that, um, that counts as activating John Kendall, and that's the end of the turn. Um, okay. Um, if I wanted to, actually, I could still move John Kendall, or I could use this again. And uh, I am going to use this again. I'm going to spend another two command points. Um, I feel this is the best way to use John Kendall is to try and get more people on the map. So again, another two. I've met all the conditions here, and so I'm going to re roll these three dice again, hoping for a four. Uh, and we got it this time with plenty to spare. And so we do, in fact, get our zombie. Again, they're identical. It doesn't matter which one I grab. So I'll grab zombie one. He'll go on this carcass body. On this, uh, on this skull symbol, and I'll also put a no more, no more body symbol, no more cadaver symbol. Get to choose his facing, and uh, great. So we got a new zombie on the board, so I'll move his character card over to here. Uh, good turn, good turn. All right. Norads, what are you doing? Um, James Wu, your plan is to get us spy points, and Nick Bolter, you're the powerhouse. Uh, who isn't near anyone. We don't want to kill Cherik. Like, I'm still hoping to get him on our team, so I'm not going to try and kill him. Um, we're going to leave Nick Bolter for now, and we'll do the save thing. We'll use some more iconography here, because I know these top few cards for now as well. Um, so James Wu, I'm not going to move you. I'm just going to spend two command points. Oh, no. So his condition, spend two command points while you're either in a science room or in office quarters, and so I'm in neither right now. But this patient room is within reach, so that's where I'm going to head, and then I'll make that roll. So just grabbing a small movement is all I really need. I don't need an interact either. This one will do. So a bit of movement, activating James Will. Put this in between him and his uh, equipment. The first point of movement. Um, which will give me four, one, two, three, um, we'll take an extra step in. Four, and I'm choosing his face in. Great. Um, the second thing I'll do, will I search in this room? No. Um, something I should have done is activate this radio scrambler to show you how that worked. Uh -huh. I didn't, but you'll get to see it next turn. Okay, so I'll spend two command points on his special ability. I am in, a, I am in the proper room now. I've spent the two points, so I automatically get a spy point. I know my top three cards here, so I'm going to take it uh, to get two mission points. No, regularly, it'd be one, but exclusive to this scenario, I'll get two for it. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. Over here, we got three guys left to be activated. Let's get some... I'm showing you a lot of cool stuff on the board, but let's let's start searching again and get some cool guns. So. I'm going to activate Jessica Hollister, attach this order tile. I'm going to spend three command points on the search order uh, to hope to hopefully get a big one. It is Jess Hollister, yep. So, here's how this is going to play out. So I'm searching in this room here, which is an office quarters, and it gives me two additional search dice. So grab that right away. So two additional dice if you do a search in that room. Um, next, Jessica Hollister gives me a default four search point, and then I'm going to get two ad more additional ones uh, because of the extra CP. So four dice on top of four automatic search points. Um, okay, so a spy point. Now, because this was obtained through a search order, and we're in the Salamite player's home base, they cannot convert that into two mission points. Um, 
they can use it to examine the top three cards, but that doesn't make sense to do quite yet because we know the top three cards. So what I'm going to do is I'll start off by spending uh, two points to dig, dig just a bit. So one point, and it goes on the bottom, keeping the same orientation. Sorry, I'm going to move this down to the bottom of the table. Alright, so first point. Again, you're trying to keep the cards perfectly stacked. You don't want to accidentally see anything. And two points. Getting us to the Toxic Gas Capsule, which is pretty cool, uh, but causes damage to yourself, and I'm actually not in the right room to pick it up. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to use my Spy Point here to look at the three cards. One, two, three. Figure out which one I want. So the U.S. Constitution gives me an additional order to at the start of a turn. Med kit, knife, flamer. See that? That seems pretty cool. Um, toxic capsule, heavy machine gun. None of these can be grabbed from the room I'm in, but I can set it up. Okay, I can grab this one. And I, uh, sorry, and I can set it up so that uh, this means any room, so that another one of my players can get something that's useful. So I'll leave the heavy machine gun on top. Do I want the knife? It is weightless, and it would be nice maybe for the zombie. Um, which one do I want the most? Do I want the knife or do I want the extra order tile? If I don't take the knife, I can get a flamer for someone else. Um, okay, so that's, that's what I'll do. So I'll put the flamer on top, put these two cards back. Um, I still have four spy points left. I'm only going to use... And the U.S. Constitution costs five. Okay, I lied. I'm taking that knife. Uh, and we'll put the U.S. Constitution underneath the machine gun. That's expensive, man. Uh, so the knife only costs one, and I still had uh, four left over. So I am able to afford this, and I'll attach that straight away to Jess Hollister. Uh, does she want to do anything else with her turn? Did she move and attack? Is anybody within range? I have an opening here, so she, she can actually attack Nick Bolter. We'll see if I can get her to him. Um, there's a lot of walls actually in the way. There's a wall here, wall here, so she'd have to break through a wall, which is 10. Uh, so she won't be attacking Nick Bolter. This whole section is actually really secluded from the rest of the map, unfortunately. Um, and as the Norad player, I got to choose that because I got to choose the orientation. All right, no outside. We have Nick Bolter, who again is actually nowhere near anyone. So we're gonna we're gonna throw him in a room and see if we can steal uh, that machine gun that they placed on top. So I need to be in a weapons room. I think the only one in here is the armory, which is where uh, Frank Einstein is up there in that corner. Um, and again, all all the all the rooms have a tile, so they show you what they are. I also know if I could grab a spy point. Ah. Uh, Honestly, I, I don't know what I'd do with you, Nick Bolter. Um, I don't know what I'd do with you, so I'm just going to activate you. I'm going to hold on to my last few command points here. So I'm not sure what to do. So I'm going to activate you and not do anything. Okay, over to the Salmite side. Jeff Dealer, what was the plan with you? Jeff Dealer is over here in the satellite room, and he's there to try and get spy points. So we'll spend two, our last two, our last two command points on him to activate him. Or will we? Something I would love to do would be to uh, beat up Vasquez. And I think that's the way to go. Because this is, this is the only opportunity for Frank Gunstone to do that. So we're going to activate Jeff Dealer and not do anything. Um, over here with our last few points. Um... I do want to get this radio scrambler going. As, not, as much as it's nice to spend the two command points to get the spy point, um, I do want to show you how the radio scrambler works. So I'll attach something with an interact um, to James Moon. Again, all my characters have been engaged or activated, so I can go back to him. And uh, to make sure it works, let's spend three. Our, the maximum CP will be two more, so I can only spend two. Looking at the Radio Scrambler's conditions, I spend one on an Interact and make an Engineering roll. So I get two default dice plus the one additional, pointing me at three. 
I need a three, and if successful, I get to turn this thing on. Uh, so, eight, so very good roll. Uh, so the radio scrambler is on, as a reminder, uh, I'll place this over the on off switch there and I'll also take the NORAD radio scramblers um, and you'll get to see those next initiation phase which uh, is coming up quick so that's it over here Salamites again they're gonna beat up Vasquez with Frank Einstein so they're just gonna activate a uh, zombie one and that's it uh, NORAD they know uh, Vasquez is gonna get hurt but she's at her max CP Nick Bolter, is he close enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, he's not bad. Uh, we can send Nick Bolter to move ten spaces closer. Uh, and we will. We won't We won't just leave a character doing nothing. We'll try and keep it interesting. Um, so attaching this, and we'll spend our last two command points, which I was thinking of spending on better order tiles, but we'll spend it like this to move him ten spaces. Um, to try and get a little more involved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so not quite close enough. And then finally, the interesting turn here. So Frank Einstein, who has only been used by the NORAD side so far to get two points and to see some equipment, is going to be used now um, to strike against Vasquez. So we're going to need one movement to do so, and then a close combat. Um, so here's that, and here's a lower version, so that's what we'll use. So attaching this to Frank Einstein, we'll spend one on movement. Um, I'm activated in her side so she can interrupt, but um, the Norads are out of command points, so that's not going to happen. And we'll just go one, two. Um, we'll stop there, and we'll spend our next command point on the close combat. So Frank Einstein gets four dice, and you'll see that can be very punishable. Um, however, Vasquez also gets to roll defense, or in her case, gets an automatic defense. So for close combat, we're looking on that inside arc. Uh, for Frank Einstein, we have dark blue. For Vasquez, we also have dark blue. Frank Einstein's dark blue, four dice. Here we go. Uh, and a good roll up against Vasquez's dark blue, which is an automatic two. So 2 plus her defense of 3 is 5. And then here, geez, so we have 7 damage here. So 7 minus the 5, so that'll be 2 wounds to Vasquez. Um, great. Um, and so that's the end of the round. Um, I'll do the cleanup, and then I'll bring you guys right back, and uh, I will show you how this radio scrambler works. Great.